Lord of my ancestors, Shimona Oloni, Ironi, Ishemi, Sodo, Ashemi, guide my words, my thoughts, and my actions towards success. Kabo, welcome. Ori Ire Funowo, good tidings to you. This is a continuation of the series that we're doing on or reviewing the blogs that we've been doing since uh, 2016. So we're going back, we're looking at those blogs and doing a video commentary on them. I do tend to look down and, and focus on my notes more because I don't want to stray too far from the particular lesson that we're doing at the time. So um, bear with me as I glance down and back uh, in the direction, general direction of the camera um, to uh, discuss this particular topic. The topic is talking with ancestors. So this is back February 2016. And even back then, I knew that this topic was an important topic for us to discuss, talking with ancestors. Little did I know at the time that four years later in 2020, it would be an even more important topic. We've gone through so much in 2020. So many uh, feelings, you know, emerging as we've gone through this pandemic and the politics and you know, just the whole, this year has just been wow. You know, and so being able to reach out and tap into resources to elevate our spirit, to give us guidance and understanding is critical in this period of time. And so it's good that we're looking back at this topic of talking with ancestors and um, spending some time with it. And even though we're looking back to 2016, I mean, the value of what was written back in 2016 really becomes manifest if we can take that information into the present moment and it still applies. We can still look at it and say, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Even though it was said back there, it makes sense to me now and I see how I can use this information right now to deal with what it is that's happening in my life and in the world. So our dilemma, hopefully most of you know that race, which is one of the central themes of this year, 2020, race is a social construct. It's one of the tools, one of the many tools that the hidden have used to divide us up to categorize us, to turn us against each other. These differences that, that are the elements of what is called race, skin color, hair texture, um, the features of the nose and the lips and things like that. Those things represent less than 1% of your and my DNA less than 1%. I mean, if you do banking and you got some money deposited in the bank and the interest that you're earning on that money, if you're into earning interest, if the interest that you're earning on that money is less than 1%, you are not impressed at all with what your money is, you know, on the, the ability of your money to grow in the bank at less than 1%. So think about this, transfer that over. I mean, how much time and attention should you and I be paying to race? How much time and attention should you and I be paying to, uh, to, to gender differences? So this is the machinations of the hidden. The hidden have an agenda. And that agenda is not in the best interest of humanity. It's certainly not in the best interest of the children of the motherland. And so we want to kind of touch on that in this in this talk that we're having today. 
Let me say a little bit about what I mean by the hidden. Who am I referring to as the hidden? When I use the term the hidden, I'm referring to those beings that intentionally hide themselves so that they can work at manipulating the rest of humanity to their own benefit. Notice I said they intentionally hide themselves. I refer to them as the hidden. Olorun, Olodumade, Egun, Eurisha. They are not intentionally hiding themselves from us. So I refer to them as the unseen. The hidden do not wish to be seen for what they really are and for what they're really doing in the world. The unseen, on the other hand, are not hiding from us, but simply exist on a different energetic plane that requires your and my elevated consciousness in order for us to become aware of their presence. That's the difference. So when I use the term the hidden, I'm talking about human beings here on the planet that uh, intentionally hide themselves so that they can manipulate humanity in their own best interest. The unseen are the spiritual forces, the source of life, the spiritual forces that support not only life itself, but your and my journey in life, in the low job. So, the current clash of races, gender, classes, religions, is a manifestation of social control. Our attention is, so, is turned so firmly in the direction of labeling each other and hating each other and fighting each other that many of us miss the bigger picture of who and what we are. And instead, too many of us become witting and unwitting puppets of the hidden. So when we talk about the term, the expression, the hypnosis of social conditioning, and I, I go into a little bit of detail on that concept uh, in Ifai Wa Lesson 1, so I'll put a link down in the description so that you can follow up on that look more deeply into that information. Um, so we need to, if we are subject to the hypnosis of social conditioning, we need something to shift our consciousness. We need an external source of stimulation that is not in any way impeded by the machinations of the hidden. This video chat is about one of those external sources of stimulation that you and I have access to. That external source of stimulation that we call Egun, our ancestors, and the Isopo, the connection that we have to our ancestors. Let me use an analogy that I, I talk about in the more detail in the um, Ifaiwa lessons, um, but it's worth mentioning here just for clarification. The hypnosis of social conditioning. Take some fly larvae, put it in a jar, put some grass and other stuff down in there, maybe a little piece of bread or whatever, you know, and put a top on the jar, punch some holes in it, and let the fly larvae mature to become full blown flies. They'll, the larvae will eat the, the cocoon, the chrysalis that it's in as it matures. And then it'll you know, mature and it'll come out. And the flies will begin to crawl up the jaw, crawl back down the jaw. When they become wings become strong enough, they'll fly up to the top of the jaw and they'll fly back down to the bottom of the jaw. After they've been in there for a while, take the top off the jaw. Guess what? Those flies will fly to the top of the jaw and fly back down. 
they'll crawl up to the top of the jaw and they'll crawl back down. In their lifetime, less than 10% of those flies will ever escape the jaw. They have a premature cognitive commitment that their world is defined by the space within that jaw. They know no other way. They see themselves no other way. They see their world no other way. It is the jaw. They are subject to the hypnosis of social conditioning. This is what the hidden have done and are doing to you and I, putting us in the condition that tells us and reinforces in us the idea of our own limitations. And over time, we begin to live as though we are that limited being that the hidden have socialized us into thinking that we are. Here's the key though. After a while, take a pencil, stick it down in the jaw, and stir it up. By agitating the environment, more of the flies will begin to escape the jaw because of the agitation to the environment. And as more flies escape the jaw, even more flies will begin to escape because, you know, one little fly look up, you see, you say, look, look, Joe, Joe left, man. You know, I can do that. And, right. And so we are looking for, we need something that is an external source of stimulation, that pencil in the jaw, to wake us up to the fact that we are not who the hidden have conditioned us to think that we are but we're something much more, much greater, much more powerful than that. And that external source of stimulation is what we're talking about in this video. That external source of stimulation, many, but one of them is Egun, our ancestors. Okay. Let me give you a, a kind of interesting uh, point of view on this. According to my DNA, I'm 85% West African, mostly Nigerian, but also from the Cameroon, Mali, the Bantu, uh, Southern Bantu communities. The other 15% are European, mostly English, uh, way from England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe. Childhood experience. When I was growing up, my one of my mother's days, I would say her day, was St. Patrick's Day. She loved St. Patrick's Day. She would wear, definitely she'd wear something green, and she would, you know, uh, watch the parade, you know. And as a child, I mean, it wasn't no big deal to me. I mean, that was just her way. It was, you know, it was just something that, that she did. I doubt very seriously, in fact, I'm certain, she had no idea of her European ancestry, okay? that there was Irish and Scottish blood DNA in her. But across the eons of time, across the apparent barrier between the spiritual and the physical world, her ancestral DNA was able to speak to her. And she manifested that communication by her attraction to and her involvement in the celebration of St. Patrick's Day. So what I'm saying to you is that there is a connection, okay, a barrier that cannot hold us from being able to communicate with our ancestors. There's a connection. The barrier is not real. When the fly jaw is, the top is taken off of the jaw, the fly walks to or flies to the top and flies back down because it perceives a barrier that it thinks it has been conditioned to think is real, but it's not. 
the barrier between us and our ancestors, this world, the Moja, and the spirit world, that barrier is not real. We can penetrate that barrier, and that's what this talk is about. Relative to our ancestors, we want to talk about penetrating that barrier because there is tremendous wisdom for us to gain, insight for us to gain by being able to communicate with our ancestors. Turn the page. So, I said back in um, 2016, let's dig into the post. In the Ifa tradition, we believe that our ancestors at Gun maintain a consciousness, an interest, and a connection to this to this world that we call the marketplace. There are probably very few of you, very few people, who have not had some kind of experience in passing through that barrier, getting beyond that barrier. Some experience with you know, getting a strong feeling from a deceased ancestor, maybe even a close friend. I've had you know, an experience with a friend of mine, a local childhood friend who um, died in Vietnam, and I'm sitting in, you know, in the, in the laboratory in college, you know, um, uh, working on something, and somebody touched me on my shoulder. Man. I mean, just as real as I just touched myself. And in that instant, I knew who it was. Okay? But he was already dead. I didn't know it at the time, but I found out several days later, a week later, that he had passed a week earlier than that experience of mine. So this barrier between the worlds is not real. And we need to open ourselves up to that possibility that we can communicate with those who, are le who have left this reality, but still nonetheless exist. So although we are separated by the dimensions of marketplace, the Oja, versus home, Ile, the barrier between these two dimensions is permeable. We can pass through it. We can speak to our Egun, and they can hear us, and they can dwell in, as they dwell in the realm of ancestors. They can hear us, and they can respond. So ask yourself, what must our Igun be thinking and feeling now in the face of the current plight of their descendants and those who are, who are ripped from the motherland, ripped from the soil? Okay? What must they be saying to us? What message are they giving us? What, what advice are they trying to give us? What are they trying to encourage us to do? For me, it's D-Day. D-Day, D-Day, see you ashe your yen. Rise, rise, rise into your power. Escape the hypnosis of social conditioning. Wake up. Back in 2016, I said, it is also true that our ancestors can project their ashe, their spiritual energy through that membrane into our world to try to assist us in our personal journey. If you believe that we are spiritual beings that come into physical form and that the energetic being, the soul that inhabits the body, that, that is attached to this body, exists after the body dies, then there's no reason for you to not believe that that ancestor who has passed is still alive on some plane and still connected to us in some way. So what we're talking about here then is opening up a channel of communication, connectivity, between ourselves and the realm of spirit. 
mi sei e mi fa aiello già o lunile. The world is the marketplace and the spirit world is home. There's a beautiful odu. Uh, odu Oshefu, 255th, 255th odu. That gives us insight into this this relationship between the two worlds, our journey into the world, our birth, our experience, and our death, and then our rebirth. Let me excerpt from uh, from that Odu. And remember, BOA, BOA, Ifa Ru Solo. Okay? Um, like Proverbs, like Proverbs is how Ifa speaks. Ru Ifa Solo. I'm quoting. These were Ifa's declarations to Olodumare, the Oba of the world, and to Olodumare, the Oba of heaven, when offering sacrifice to have an enlarged group. When we give birth to babies on earth, the sacrifice of Olodumare, the Oba of the world, has manifested. And when people die, the sacrifice of Olodumare, the Oba of heaven, has manifested. Instead of the world spoiling in the presence of Olodumare, the Oba of the world, if 200 people die in the morning, 200 others shall be born in the evening. As travelers go, so do travelers return. If 200 people go in the morning, 200 others shall return in the evening. Odu Oshefu, 255. Your ancestors have a primary interest in your and my journey in the world. Not only do they have a primary interest, your ancestors have a primary interest in your journey and the journey of your lineage but they also have an interest in the journey of humanity because we're all connected. We all come from the same source. And the contract that humanity has with the divine is that we will continue to be born, live and die, and reborn until we have created this, the good condition for every human being. That's the social contract that we have with Olodumare. So, remember that that's, that's in uh, Iwari Rosu, the 77th Odu. We talked about that in our first tape. We go back and kind of review that, the importance of this social contract, that when we come into the world, we're here for a reason, and how we live our life should be guided by this social contract, this divine contract, that we're here to do good. And in doing good, to bring about the good condition for every human being. This uh, Ifa worldview binds each of us to the past, the present, and to the future. It calls us to mindfulness of the highest values, traditions, and aspirations of those who came before us. At the same time, it compels us to be mindful of the choices that we make during our personal journey, because our choices affect the legacy of our ancestors, the conditions under which our, we live, and the conditions under which our descendants will be born. The Ifa ancestral worldview also fulfills several of the essential needs of our species, like a sense of belonging and a sense of connection. If you understand that once someone returns to the, leaves the, the Oja and returns home to Ile, all of what they have done in the world becomes clear to them. The good, the bad, and the ugly. 
they're without confusion as to the consequences of the choices that they made while they were on their journey in the world. Because confusion cannot pass from this world to the next. It can't pass from the Oja to the Ile. There is no confusion in the Ile. We say, Ajiirebi. Uh, Excuse me. May the unblemished cloth of Arunmila continue to clothe us in the wisdom of the here and the hereafter. Ajiirebi. Uh, the hidden uses confusion to deceive and destroy, to rob the world of the good condition for all except themselves. Since your Egun can see things clearly, their only motivation is the progression of the lineage of which they are a part. They do this out of gratitude for the gift of life, because of their understanding of the life process, and because they understand the social contract that we've all made with Source, Orisun, Oluru, God. Ancestors' only intention is your and our success in bringing about the good condition for us, for our families, and for all of humanity. Even if the relationship between you and your relative, your deceased relative, was a bad relationship, when they were, you know, when they were alive, once they pass and they go into the realm of ancestors, there's no confusion, and the behaviors that that cause the problems in your relationship with them while they were alive, that confusion is not there anymore. They do this out of gratitude. They assist us, help us out of gratitude for the gift of life. You need not fear. You need not hold back. You need not hold grudges about establishing a relationship with an ancestor who may have who you may have had a problem with in this life. Because again, for them, everything has become clear. It's just us that need to get over, you know, the emotional baggage that we still carry because of things that might have happened while that ancestor was alive. They are here to support you fully, and they are no longer troubled by the confusion that may have been a part of their life when they were in the world. So the question then becomes, okay, so how can you begin to, to build this relationship with ancestors? That, that, the, you know, the, the, the idea that we are you know, bringing forth in this particular tape. How do you build that relationship? A place for ancestors. Many, if not most, practitioners of Ifa have a small altar somewhere in their home or around their home. On the altar, white cloth, uh, a few pictures uh, of, of deceased ancestors, um, some family heirlooms, uh, a clear glass in which they can uh, make libation, make an offering of omitutu, cool water to ancestors. It could be a wooden goblet as well. Um, when I traveled in um, China and Southeast Asia, Tha uh, Thailand, Bali, um, other places in Southeast Asia, every, just every place I went, I saw ancestral recognition in the temples, outside businesses, in people's homes. There were offerings put out for ancestors. The hidden do not want you and I to understand and maintain this connection because the inspiration, the knowledge, and the power that is available to us 
through this practice cannot be controlled by the hidden. See, this is a direct link between the spiritual and the physical world. And there's no technology that the hidden has in their bag of tricks that can interrupt this communication between the ancestors and you. The only thing that they can do is get into your head. That's how they can separate you from the power that's at your fingertips. To get into your head and make you think of yourself as less than who you, and what you really are. To get into your head, to get you into a state of social conditioning where your world is defined by the jaw, by what they have told you, by the condition that they have prescribed for you. Once you realize that that's their prescription and it's not the truth, you can break free. And as you see other people around you going, turning to Ifa, turning to other indigenous traditions, uh, seeking other ways of understanding themselves in the world, that's like taking the pencil, sticking it in the jaw and stirring it up agitating, agitating so that you recognize that you're not as restricted, you're not as contained as you may have thought you were. Placing a plate on the table and offering food to ancestors, whatever it is that you're eating, put some on the plate for them especially if it happens to be one of the foods that you know was really something that they enjoyed when they were alive. Even if it's, if you're not having that, cook some up for them and put it on the plate. This is how you begin to build this, this sense of presence of ancestors in your daily life by making libation to them, by uh, offering them food, by talking to them. Don't let a day go by. That, you're not, you're, that your, your mind, your ori is not open to communicating with your ancestors. When you're making some decision, you're, you're in the process of trying to figure something out. Talk, include ancestors in that as though they were right there with you. I mean, if, if you were getting ready to do something and you, you, know, you needed some advice on it and your mother or your father was alive and, and there for you, you know, I mean, wouldn't you say, hey, Ma, you know, hey, Dad, would you... Could you help me with this? Okay. Well, because they have transformed into another energetic state, they're still there for you. So talk to them. Reach out to them. Acknowledge them in all the little ways that you can. Pouring libation, putting food out, communicating with them. Um, place on the altar some uh, family heirloom for my, my brother, who is my older brother, who is deceased, I have a, a, a watch that he used to carry, one of those you know, old uh, watches, the brown watches uh, that um, he used to carry. I have that on the altar for him as a way of building this relationship and making sure that there's a connection there present in my mind about his place in the world and his place in my life. Listen, be aware, be mindful of ancestors. They're there for you. They're there for us. We recognize that death does not end the relationship between souls. This is, this is that Ifa perspective. We recognize that, that the barrier is not real. It is permeable. We travel in the world not as individual egos, but as a sentient part of a much greater whole. And this is what you're pointing to. You're not here alone. You probably have a, what I call a gateway ancestor, someone who has passed that you had a good, positive, open relationship with, you know, well, Use them as a gateway to tap into the energy of all of your ancestors. When I get ready to go into my Ile, 
And I, I, I begin by going to have a picture of my uh, mother outside the inlet, and I place my hand on that picture, and I recognize her, I honor her, you know, Mokieo, I greet you, Mokieo, I greet you, Mokieo, Ikieye, I greet you with honor. And then I say, Ori Iya, meaning the consciousness of all of the mothers. And I look past my mother's image into this realm. For me, I mean, it's like I can see it clearly. It's just layer after layer after layer after layer after layer. You know, train tracks, you know, you're looking down the train track and you know, right, as they go into the distance, way into the distance, that's what it's like. It's like here's, here's, you know, mother right there. But I know that beyond her, there is layer upon layer upon layer going all the way into the distance where what's in the distance becomes you know, a little hazy, a little foggy. But I know that all of that space is filled with that which is there to support me during this period of time that I'm in the world making this journey. Here's a little homework assignment for you. Look up quantum entanglement okay, in the category of, of uh, quantum physics. Okay? Just do a little Google search or whatever and, and look up quantum entanglement, how it says basically two things that are connected at some point, we're talking about electrons, two things that are connected at some point, when they are then separated, they are still connected. The way in which they are connected is not fully understood. But what we do know is that when they take one, the one electron and they spin it, the other electron that was connected to it also spins, but not an hour later or a day later or some period of time later. When this electron is, is affected in some way, the other electron that was at one time connected to it is affected instantaneously. At the same moment, it experiences what the other electron is experiencing. And that's true regardless of how much distance is placed between those electrons. Hence, since we were all at one time part of one thing, we were all one thing, Orisun, source, Olorun, God, the source energy. We were all one thing. And then creation, manifestation, well, we were all connected. So what is happening in one realm is energetically, energetically connected to what's happening in another realm. We're not separate from our ancestors. We're not separate from the past, nor are we separate from the future. We are all connected. The loja is simply the way in which we're experiencing a process through which we can grow. Remember, what are we doing here? We're experiencing uh, isoko, contrast, isopo, connectivity, and nawa, expansion. That's what the loja, that's what this experience in the loja is about. But it's not separate from everything else. It's part of this wholeness, this oneness that is creation. So if you have baggage with an ancestor, forget that. Not important. Not important because we operate under the notion that death is like a, a door closing. You know, called, you know, Uncle So and So died. So you know, um, if he was here, you know, I'd tell him. You know, or if he was here, you know, I, you know, I, I'd want him to know how, you know, what he did was wrong or whatever the case may be. Well, death is not a barrier that cannot be penetrated. You and I can penetrate that barrier. And if you understand that regardless of what happened with Uncle George while he was in the world, 
now that he's in the realm of ancestors, he's operating from a much clearer perspective than he was in the world. And we can then connect with him. There's an energetic connection there anyway, already, because otherwise you wouldn't still be carrying a grudge. You wouldn't still be angry. You still wouldn't be hurt. So clearly, there's an energetic connection between you and him or you and her, you and them, regardless of the fact that they are deceased. So use that energetic connection to link up, to tap in, and to elicit their support and their help, to hear the messages that they may be giving you to help you find your way in this world. So take a moment every day to talk with your ancestors throughout the day. Talk to your ancestors as though they were right there with you, ready to support you, eager to support you, eager to play their role in helping you to navigate your life. Talking with ancestors. We need that. We need that, especially in this day and time when we are struggling through so many different things. May all Dumade Arisha and ancestors bestow on you guidance, wisdom, and abundant blessing. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I hope you like this video. If you liked it, uh, click the subscribe button to my channel. Uh, click the notification button so that you get notifications. And check the description below to uh, get links to other information that I've met mentioned either in this video or in other. Nothing.